changing a feeling I had in the past can help me now because when I review it and I see it was non-love, I feel love in that incident right now. So I'm converting what was non-love to love at this present moment. There's nothing about subconscious. When I now review something that was not with a feeling of love, but right now I feel love, I am at this moment increasing my loving. I use those incidents again and again that turn on love and feel it and learn to love. In those former incidents, I was trying to get love and not feeling so good as I could feel right now when I feel love. One can, if one wants to, become a millionaire. Every person could be a billionaire or a trillionaire, or a quintillionaire. If that, was a, if that were his consciousness, that this truth that I speak of works. Your inner conviction does it. When your, your thinking does it, when your unconscious thinking that is negative on a thing is overwhelmed by the conscious thinking to the contrary that you can, then you can. Right now you're unaware of what you had for breakfast yesterday. But when I mention it to you, you start thinking on it you start looking for it and those thoughts come up into consciousness you remember it I had bacon and eggs a rash or a bacon before I asked you the question you were not conscious of the fact that you had a rash or a bacon for breakfast the day before or a week before mm -hmm. And am I asking you that? It brought it from the unconscious into consciousness. Oh, I, I always had a, the idea that a draft would give me a cold, and it used to actually give me colds. One day thinking on it, while I was sitting in a breeze enjoying it, I said, boy, this is the same thing that I call a draft that gives me colds. And here I'm enjoying the thing and not getting a cold. It was a cool breeze. I said, that's silly to hold on to that thought that a draft gives me a cold. And after that, I never got a cold again from a draft. I changed that unconscious thought that drafts give me colds to one that a breeze, a cool breeze is nice and does not give me a cold. That actually happened to me. Thoughts are the only things that dam up the infinite being that we are. But they don't necessarily have to. We can have large thoughts for instance, uh, I'm a billionaire. I can be a billionaire, or I am a billionaire. I can fly like a bird. I can swim like a fish. I can run like a deer. But we're absolutely, absolutely convinced in our thinking that we can't run that fast. 
So our thoughts are our limitations, and even a large thought is limited to the largeness of it. It's still not infinite. You can always have more, can't you? And more and more and more. And that's what would happen in thinking. You know, have more and more and more and more and more. See, first you want to get a hundred thousand, then you want a million, then you want more millions, then you want hundreds of millions, then you want billions, and then hundreds of billions. And today we have trillionaires, and the trillionaires will, won't stop. They'll try to become quadrillionaires. If they become quadrillionaires, they'll want to be quintillionaires. If they become quintillionaires, they'll want to be septillionaires. I, I'm not sure of that one. No. Octillionaires. Sept would be nine. De yeah, the thoughts determine the amount of the infinity that manifests for us. So you drop thoughts of limitation and take on thoughts of less limitation. I was so ill when I started, I had one foot in the grave. And when I saw that my thinking was caused for what was happening to me, I immediately saw my body from my chin down to my toes as perfect. And instantly, I knew it was perfect. I never even thought of the idea of checking it out. I knew the lesions and adhesions of my intestines. Intestines due to perforated ulcers were undone. I knew everything within me was in perfect running order, and it was. As I saw that, source of all intelligence was right behind my mind, that my mind was filtering through bits of it. I allowed more and more of it to come through. And digging for this, wanting to know what am I, and seeing myself revealed to myself more and more as an with, with less and less limits on it. I wanted to go all the way on that. And I began to see that the only limitations I have are the ones that I accept. So looking for this unlimited being that's I already had inkling of that I was, I got insights of this tremendous unlimited being that I am. And I'm seeing that, I right there and then realize, well, I'm not this limited body that I thought I was. I am not this mind with its limitations that I thought it was. And I undid all body limitation and almost all mind limitation. Just by saying, I am not it, finished, done, period, that's it. I so declared. It was obvious to me that I wasn't that body and mind that I had thought I was. I just saw it, that's all. Simple when you see it. And I let go of identifying with this body. And when I did that, I saw that my beingness was all beingness. That beingness is like one grand ocean. It's not chopped up into parts called drops of bodies. It's all one ocean which caused me to identify with every being 
every person. And even every atom in this universe. And that's an experience that's so tremendous, it's indescribable. And you see that the universe is, first you see the universe is in you, then you see the universe as you. Then you know the oneness of this universe. Then you are finished forever with separation and all the hellishness that's caused only by separation. Then you can no more be fooled by the apparent limitations of the world. You see them as a dream, as an apparency, because you know that your very own beingness has no limits. And should you choose to express them, you can. However, you don't because of your compassion for others and the fact that they cannot take it. You hold it in the background, you hold it away from them rather than impose upon them. And that's why the masters rarely, rarely ever show their abilities. What they want is the other one to discover that the other one has all these abilities. Nothing is impossible when you get into that state. There's only one mind and we're, if we're in tune with it, everyone fits together perfectly. No one has to be told even what to do. When I saw that the mind was mine, that the body was mine, I began to question, who am I who has this body and mind? And what I saw was that I was an unlimited beingness. That this beingness was the cause of everything and yet was not subject to whatever it caused or created. And this beingness, being unlimited, the only limitation was created by the mind limiting itself, or by my limiting the action of my mind. Beingness is simply existence. Isness, amness. It's the I that I am. It's the I-ness of me. And that part is without limitation. When you discover this, the first thing you recognize is that there's no need to be a victim of your environment, to be a victim of nature. That you can consciously create your circumstances to be the way you would like them to be. And from then on, your consciousness is one of, I have everything I need as I need it. Everything is in perfect attunement. Everything is okay. Everything is good. And because of that consciousness, that becomes your world. Everyone makes his world by his mental conceptions. 
Everyone sees the world in accordance with his ideas and conceptions. You don't like the world out there? Change your thinking and your world will change. Now, of course, your thinking includes your subconscious thinking, the thoughts that are in your mind that you're not looking at. Any thought that I'm not looking at at this moment is unconscious. The moment I look at it, we call it consciousness or conscious. So the unconscious thinking is the stored up accumulation of all our past thinking that we're holding in the background and not looking at it for the moment because we don't want that. That what looks to us like a tremendous uh, piece of work to hold in consciousness everything from the past. And so we store it in the background and we call it unconscious. The unconscious thoughts are effective whether we look at them or not at the moment. And the only way to handle them, change them, is to make them conscious, and then on a conscious plane we can change them. That's what I was doing while I was making this tremendous growth. I was freeing myself from all the former concepts of limitation that I had accumulated until I felt no more limitation until I had no more, or hardly any more thoughts of limitation. If you let go of all of them, you disappear. Because the body is a limitation. The body would disappear, you wouldn't disappear. The logs in the dam are the subconscious thoughts, which when they're Hold out, the infinity behind the dam can flow through you. The reason why people do not discover this is first, they're not looking for it where it is. They're unconsciously all looking for it in the thing they call happiness. But they do not know that this happiness lies in their discovering that they are beings with no limits. And by force of habit, they accept that they are limited to their bodies, to their troubles. And the accepting of it is the continuing of it. And as we continue it, we make it better and better and better. So our problems and our difficulties get better, get more and more and more. When they go to the extreme, like they did with me, it seems that only then are people shook up enough to re-question the entire thing enough to see that the way that we are going is not the way that our happiness does not lie in fame fortune and in being loved when things get to the extreme they realize that Those seeking those three things invariably end up in frustration and unhappiness. And then, when they hit the extreme, there's only one way to go. 
not the way that they were going, looking for happiness and materiality, but to go within and question, what is this all about? Then they will discover what I discovered. Anyone can do it. If first he hears of the way out, and second, believes that, that, that this will, is the way out. And third, wants it so much that it becomes first in his life, more important than anything else, more important than seeking the happiness the way he had been seeking it then he discovers that he is unlimited, that his joy has no limits, that the real natural way of life is perfectly harmonious, that nature is harmonious, and that all he needs to do is get in tune with it and live it. 